Hey guys, it's Derek from Farmstead Fun. Uh, today I just wanted to go through and show you um, how we set up our brooder. Uh, this is the brooder we use here, it's just a galvanized waterer. Um, it works great for us, we've used it twice before. It, it's awesome. Um, what, the first year we had chickens, we ordered 16 chickens from uh, one of the hatcheries. Um, we, put them, we put them in here when they came, day old chicks. And uh, they did great, we moved them outside. Uh, we lost 15 chickens overnight on Father's Day. So that was a great Father's Day present for me. That was my first Father's Day. <laughs> and uh, we lost 15 chickens. We had one left. We ended up giving that one to a friend. We weren't going to get chickens again that year. Um, but one of, our, one of our friends found out that we lost all of our chickens and they had some extras, so they gave us some of their extras, which was really nice. The second time we hashed, we hashed mm -hmm. our own chicks, um, we actually had a broody hen when we got back from vacation because the person who was taking care of the chickens for us, they didn't collect the eggs regularly, which was fine. But um, so there ended up being about 10 eggs in their nesting box, and one of them went broody. So instead of taking her off and trying to get her to not be broody, I thought it would be a lot of fun to get her to hatch her own. Um, so we did that, and I'll, I'll show some pictures of uh, when we did that. And that was, that was a lot of fun. It was very cool to see her taking care of the chicks. It was so much easier than getting chicks from the hatchery because uh, if you guys ever had, you know, get chicks from a hatchery, you have to watch out for pasty, but um, yeah, there's a lot more care for you. You know, you got to check on them regularly. Uh, when there was a mom, a hen, you didn't have to have to do anything. She did everything. I just made sure they had food and water and they, they thrived. Um, so that was so much easier than the day old chicks from the hatchery. Um, we were trying to get a hen to go broody this year. It didn't happen, at least not yet. Last year it happened. It was in June. So we're going to keep trying and see what happens. Because I would like to do that again. It's a lot of fun. I think Logan's, you know, he's almost three now, so he'd really like that. Um, yeah. But today I'm going to take you through. We, we are hatching right now. We have some turkey eggs, white midget, uh, heritage breed turkeys, um, in our incubator. And I'll, I'll show you that inside in a few minutes. But I want to get this set up first because they're probably going to hatch like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, maybe something in there. So, so it's just time to get it set up, get their food ready, get their waters ready. We're going to make some uh, the magic water. Justin Rhodes shows us how to make some magic water. So we're going to uh, we're going to we're going to do that. Sorry guys, my battery died. But um like I said, we're going to get this ready to go. I'm also going to show you uh, what we've got started in the greenhouse. We've got quite a bit in the greenhouse going now. And uh, yeah, so we're going to take you over there too. Boy, Cecil. Well, an update on Cecil. I think I found somebody. We'll butcher him up for us. Uh, somebody local. He's going to, I'm going to give him a call yet. But uh, I, I was talking to one of the other local farmers here and he says, just to go talk to Teddy. So I'm gonna go talk to Teddy. And uh, maybe this fall we'll have him butchered. And um, we're gonna start looking for our uh, our family milk cow. I'm gonna miss him. He's, uh, I've never butchered an animal like this before. I, we've, we've done our own chicken once before. Um, I didn't want a video of that because I'd never done it before. But uh, when, we, when we butcher the turkeys, we're raising the turkeys primarily for meat. Um, we have six eggs right now in the incubator. Um, they all look fertile when I candle them at 10 days. So we'll see how many we get. Uh, I'm hoping to get at least a breeding pair that I can hold on to and uh, just keep making our own turkeys every year. Because I think turkeys don't lay as many eggs as chickens do. Turkeys only lay about a dozen eggs a year. I, th I think that's right. Um, and they're also a lot harder, they're a lot more sensitive to the different things. They die easier than chickens do. So, but I'm hoping because these are heritage breeds that they'll, uh, they'll do good and we'll, we'll take good care of them. They're going to be in the house, not in the barn as, as young, uh, <laughs> as, as young poults. So. We'll, uh, we'll see how that goes, but we gotta get everything set up first and we'll take you in the greenhouse really quick and show you what we've got growing in there. Because we, uh, last year Justin Rhodes did a video of uh, 100 days of growing food. So we're gonna, we're gonna start doing that too. Every day we're gonna just try to plant something. Um, so 
we're going to see how that goes because we really like to grow as much of our own food as we can. Uh, that was the point of doing this and buying this property and everything. We want, <laughs> we want to grow as much of our own food as we can, and uh, we've we've been doing that. We've, we've grown our own. We, you know, like I said, we brought us our own chicken. We wanted to try that to make sure it was something we wanted to do, um, and it was. It turned out better than we expected. I mean, it tasted like chicken, but the flavor was. You couldn't compare it to anything else, uh, like from a grocery store or anything like that. It was, it was so much better than what you could buy at a grocery store. So, but anyway, let's get this set up. We're gonna take you in the greenhouse. So this is the greenhouse. Um, we've got quite a bit started. Uh, you can see this is zucchini. This is really taken off. Um, I, I had no idea how well the things were going to do in here. Uh, the tomatoes. I've never been very good at starting tomatoes. This is the best I've ever done starting my own tomato plants. Um, really starting anything. I'm not. I'm not so good at it. I have never been. But it's something I always wanted to do and I always wanted to practice it. But uh, I mean, this is basil. We got zucchini. Uh, these, this stuff here, we just planted a couple of days ago. This is peas, and you can see they're already starting to sprout. Most of them. And I'm sure the other ones are not too far behind. Here's our peas. These are lima beans, and you can see these, these are also just starting to sprout, if it'll focus. And like I said, these are these have all been planted like not even a week ago. This is spaghetti squash. This is thyme. We got parsley in this one. Uh, this one was rosemary, this one was oregano. I put all of them up, all of the packets up here, just so we would know what they were, but it's so humid in here that all of this is running. So it's still readable, but not <laughs> nearly as well. But the zucchini here, this is ready to be <laughs> transplanted. I really should do this soon. We'll probably do that tomorrow. And over here, this is sage. Uh, spinach. Ah, oh, the spinach is sprouting too. This wasn't sprouting yesterday, but today it is. Uh, we got cucumbers. The cucumbers, are, these are all starting to sprout. You can see here. Uh, these are peppers. Peppers take longer to sprout. It'll take probably about a week. Maybe in here, maybe not as long. Uh, this is asparagus. I don't see any action here in the asparagus yet. Uh, this, these here are tomatoes. Uh, just, they're just more tomatoes, just regular beefsteak tomatoes. And then here we have some gourds growing. My mother wanted me to grow some gourds because we did that a couple years back and we made some birdhouses out of them, which was a lot of fun. I have a thermometer in here so I can see the outside temperature and inside temperature. So outside is it's kind of chilly today, it's like 49. And inside we've got 59, which is just, that's a big spread. Uh, it's, yeah, that's a 10 degree difference. That's awesome. And if the sun comes out, it'll it'll be much warmer in here. 
but yeah, everything's doing good. And like I said, um, let me talk a little bit about this. These, these here, I try not to use these too, too much because they're expensive. Um, we had these, somebody gave these to us when we bought our house a couple years ago and we've never used them. So I just thought we had them, I might as well use them. Um, I much prefer the soil blocks because you could buy the soil blocker here on Amazon for like $30, I think. And you can make your own soil blocks and it goes right into the soil and all it is is soil. So you know it's nothing bad for anything. And um, they, I feel like even though these, the roots do break through them, they don't break through them nearly as fast as like the zucchini because you can see the zucchini it's already they're already breaking through when it was the pots i feel like it would still be a little bit root bound but yeah we gotta get we gotta get these in the ground probably tomorrow if it's a nice day so yeah like i said we're gonna try to grow something or we're gonna try to plant something every day and i'll show you our garden plot and this is the garden here. I tilled it the other day. We cut the grass. We put some grass clippings in for the chickens to kind of scratch through and spread it out. But uh, this this will this will be a good start. And if we want to expand it, we'll we'll expand it down this way here where the greenhouse is sitting. But uh, yeah, so far I'm very happy with the greenhouse. It's easy to move. Um, even though the grass, this was where it was. The grass inside got is extremely tall. Um, it was so tall it was actually binding up on the the two by fours on the bottom here. So my brother came over yesterday and we ripped it out of there. The horses are playing. But anyway, my brother came over yesterday and we, we pulled it out of there and moved it over to here. So now if I keep moving this regularly when I cut the grass, um, I can move this by myself. It's very easy to move, which is which is good. It's exactly how I wanted it to be. So, all right, let's go inside. We'll set up that brooder. All right, so we still have some shavings in there from last time. We're just gonna hose this out and clean it all out really good. We'll uh, sterilize it with some vinegar. And uh, should be good to go. We'll put some nice deep bedding in there. We'll probably put one whole bag of bedding in there and uh, set up the heat light and just get everything ready for when they come. But yeah, this worked out great last time. It should work out great again. I left it on so it wouldn't freeze.
that there to give it a chance to dry and we'll fill it full of pine shavings and get the heat lamp out and set that all up and get it all ready to rock